How are you? <laughs> this is so exciting. We're just waiting on everybody. Hi, hi Rosemary. Hiya, how are you? I'm oh, good, thank you. Oh, it's so, so nice to see Mike's you. Mike's going to the butchers. Oh, Mike. Hi, hey. Mike. Hello. Hi. This is such an exciting class. So, I want to introduce you to the most wonderful Elliot. Who, hello. Hello. <laughs> who is an uh, executive chef at 45 Park Lane. Now, I don't know if you know 45 Park Lane, but it is part of the Dorchester collection. Now, I have to say, it is the most wonderful food. It's the most beautiful place. I absolutely love it. And I cannot believe that actually Elliot agreed to come here and oh, do it. canapes, which everybody hates doing, but They're actually, easy. They're so easy. So we thought we'd do a canopy masterclass. Now, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be his skivvy, okay? Um, and I'm going to be, and I've given him a square, okay? Not he's, allowed to move. He's not allowed to move out of here. I'm going to do all the running around, and literally, and um, he's going to show you and tell you all about it. Okay, talk in the camera now. So we're going to do one, two, three, four canapes today. And hello, everybody. I'm Elliot. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> An absolute pleasure. We've got four canapes. We're going to do a sea bass ceviche. We've got this beautiful sea bass, which Rosemary picked up at 5 a.m., was it? Wild, yes. Wild, wild sea things. bass. Absolutely stunning. So we're going to do a sea bass ceviche on a plantain crisp and a little coriander salad. Then we're going to do a wonderful dry-aged beef, 50 days. Yes. We're going to do that on a little crouton of... Forget, and we're going to do olive oil, the normal classic stuff. So it'll be steak tartare. Then we're going to do a Thai soft roll with a nok cham. So nok cham is like a Vietnamese dip in sauce, which is going to be absolutely amazing. They're quite tricky to do, but I'll show you how not to split the rice, the rice roll and all that kind of thing. Pretty simple. And then we'll finish off with a quail egg shooter, which is absolutely amazing. Rosemary's going to help me with that as well. Yeah. So, yeah, are we going to get started? Should we? I think, well, do you know what? I think you just get started. Yeah, we're going to get started. So, let's go for it. So, the first thing you want to do is the bread. So, everybody, are you all set up? More set than us, probably. Yes? Right. <laughs> what you need to do is get some French bread, cut it into thin slices. There we go, yeah. And we put the oven on to 170. We're going to pop it in there. And for about, well, I don't know, I think about, about eight minutes. Probably. Well, maybe eight to 10, 15. I don't know. We'll see. Everybody's oven. I find these fan assisted ovens. Uh, sometimes it depends. It's all variable, but definitely just up to 10 minutes, I would thought, or eight to 10 minutes. And I mean, if, if your bread isn't the same as this, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. You just want, whenever you have a canopy, you want it to, you want to make sure that it's like bite size, no more than one bite for a canopy. Mm. So around that size would be perfect. And if it's got a hole in it, like this sourdough, don't worry about it, it's all good. So we're going to get about 20 slices yeah. of this. And the other thing is you can't get this, you can actually cut. If you've got cutters, you can just cut bread yeah. and just cut it into little rings. Even a hobbit loaf. Even a hobbit loaf. Yeah. We've gone fancy today, haven't we, Rosemary? Yeah, we've gone very fancy. So get your tray. You're going to layer them out nicely. Let's move that one out of the way. Perfect. So let's lay them out nicely. These won't take long because I've done them quite thin. Because what you want to do is you want to make sure you've got plenty of steak tartare mix on there. But it's all about the beef, right, Rosemary? It's all about the beef. All about uh, just remember, we've got a lot of people to feed in this room. Oh, yeah. We'll do about <laughs> another 50 of these then. <laughs> Is that if I do a full tray? Yeah, do enough, a full yeah? tray. Perfect. Definitely with this lot. <laughs> they have spoons at the ready. Do you know what <laughs> yeah. happens? In when you're filming in a studio, all the cameramen have spoons on the top of their. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. <laughs> it's true. They have their own spoons to go in there. Oh, is that? That's not all right, actually. That is not all right. That one. Uh, that's not all. See, right. I'm getting told off now. Ooh. Yes. 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 Do. Well, we've got plenty of bread. We can take another loaf. You feel yeah. if yours have got holes in like ours, you can certainly go into uh, go into a bit of that if you want. That's too much. These. How's, that How's your bread? Food? How's everyone's bread there? We've got big holes, holes in bread. Have you got holes in your bread? Holes in your bread. 
No, yeah. you're okay, yeah. you're okay. No. Oh, they're better. They're better. Perfect. Let's get them on. Yeah. See, look at me, I just take it all off. And absolute so perfect, you, absolute sort of... perfectionist. <laughs> Wouldn't expect anything <laughs> less from Rosemary, would we? There you go, getting hit by a baguette now. So like that. That's perfect. I'll put then, those in the oven for you. Put a little bit of olive put oil. Put a bit of little bit of squeeze a little olive oil. I think the olive oil is good because it gives it a bit of yes, it does. a little bit of flavour. Just a touch. Mm -hmm. Olive oil, and then I like to put a little, just a little bit of black pepper. Yeah, and then we can just put. Okay. It. Has anybody got a cocktail party tonight? Not like that. Or wish. <laughs> <laughs> Get the martinis going. Yeah, get the martinis going, absolutely. So, that's the uh, steak tartare crouton in yeah. the oven, which is good. Next, we're going to work on the plantain. So plantain, a lot of people, you don't need it to be yellow. It, green is perfect. Yeah, I think it's That's what you want. Anyway. Just have a little clean down. Clean as we go. So with this, you want to get your your vegetable oil on the stove. I don't know, has everyone got a bit of oil on the stove? Oh yeah. Okay, so if you if you get a sort of a we've obviously got a frying a frying device here, but obviously most people won't have that. Does everyone have a are they gonna be frying in the pan? Yeah. Alright. So if you fill you don't want to fill it too high with the oil and you wanna really, really be careful, obviously, because you don't want this oil going everywhere. So make, if you put about, I don't know, one bottle of veg oil in. Oh, easy. In one, I would think over a pan you need to do one third. Yeah, one third into a pan. If you turn that onto a medium heat, you don't need to go fast, super fast with it. And you want to get it to around 170 degrees. But the way you can test that, if you turn the oil, get the oil on now, and let us know when you've done it, you can get a piece of the plantain. I'll go over this again in a moment and you can drop it into the oil and you can see how it reacts with the oil. But you don't, it's no rush, you don't need to go crazy no. with it, because it is probably, can be a bit dangerous if it is too hot. So what? Yeah, so the other thing is, you must have a plate by you with some J cloth on it, or, or I've got a tea towel, can't find my J cloths, just so you take them out and drain them. Perfect. So let us know when you've got the oil on, and then okay. we can start slicing the plantain up. Okay. You no, you leave, you're going to leave the skin on. A lot of people do peel it, but it actually gives it a really good yeah, colour. keeps it together. Keeps it together as well, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I worked in the Caribbean. There's an option for the plantain, because Morris, we can't get them up here. I'm a good old one online. Do you, but... do you know what you could, what you can do? You can even use like a Dorito or a taco. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I'd yeah. like, you know, the sweet taco. Taco's fine. Taco's yeah. fine. You can buy them in the bag cooked. Yeah. And also in Tesco's, you can buy, you should be able to buy plantain chips, but I mean, not always. Tesco's in Tesco's. We, we don't have Tesco's. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> You're going to be on Doritos or tacos then. <laughs> even, but even, even today, I was, I would, I did think that maybe you wouldn't be able to get plantain. You could just put it on the, on the baguette. Yes, it's easy. Not, you could Just put it on the baguette and do it on anything. Yeah. Nothing worries. So is everyone, is the oil on the stove now, everybody? Yes. Yeah. Right, lovely. And the gas is on. Just keep an eye on that. Be careful. I don't want anyone's catching fire, of course. No. So with the plantain then, I'll show you how to do this. So you, the, re, the key to this, there is a key. If you cut it that thick, it's just not going to work. It has to be very thin. So you don't want it like that. You want to take your time. And you want to try and get it as thin as possible. That's perfect. If you get it like that. Can everyone see that? All right. I'm going at a good speed. Yes, okay. Let's have a look. At, can you look at uh, Barry's? I think it's a bit thick. That's a little bit thick, Barry. A little. What is it? Can you get it a little bit thinner? Okay. Let's have a look at that. Try it. A little bit thinner. It looks good. This is probably one of the trickier bits. That looks good. That's, that looks good. That's good. Barry, that looks good. Yeah, perfect. Take your time, guys. Yeah, take your there time. There is no hurry. Can't believe I'm saying that to everybody. <laughs> Everyone's going faster than me. I'm under <laughs> pressure. Already. I love it. So while your oil's heating up, you can slice your plantain. 
Plantain is very versatile. I mean, oh, it's wonderful. And in, in the UK, it isn't. It's not really used, is no, it? No, it isn't. I mean, I used to use it a lot in the Caribbean. So you delicious. Know, I used to use it with fish. I used it oh, with. It's lovely. It's delicious. Show it off again, Rosemary. Yes, I'm showing <laughs> off again, Barry. <laughs> It's so funny. Well, when you've been to these countries and had all the produce, you, you do what's there. And I actually only learned to use it when I went out there because it's what we did. And, you know, it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. What is good to have for this is a mandolin, but they're just so dangerous. Yes. No, I mean, no, I've I sliced my finger many times. So yes, I just... we all have. And another thing, when you put this into the oil, you because of the starch, I think it's the starch, yes. you want to make sure they're not stuck together. So you're going to put them into the oil individually. Exactly. That's really, really important. So you put them in individually. You don't want them stuck together. Because if they're stuck together, they go soggy. Good tip. Very that good. is a good tip. It is a good tip. So I think, how's everyone's oil looking? Are we, you could drop one in to see how the oil is. So with ours, I don't know if you can see. Probably a bit tricky, but you'll be able to hear it. You won't be able to hear it, but, no, but it's just coming you can just out. see it. You can just see it bubbling. Can you see it? Can we see it? Be good if you can, and that's the type of. We, yes, you can see. Yeah, it. you can see it. You want it to be just nothing crazy, and you'll just see it bubbling gently, and it take it slow. It doesn't need to be rapid. Okay. If you go too fast, it will burn. Can you keep doing that? I'll yeah. put these in for you. That's perfect. <coughs> there we go. And then we can get on with making the sea bass mix, can't we? And the yes. sticks that's Don't our go one. too quickly. No. Because you know what happened this lot. <laughs> but we'll be finished before we know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, quite a few of these can't yeah, At least it's there for you. Okay. Just give them to I'll me. Keep going. Just give them to me. How's the weather all over England then? All good? Right and sunny in Essex. Is it? Is it? Yeah, blue sky. Wow. Well, we're looking pretty good here now. We're lovely. Sun is shining here too. Bit chilly. Yeah. I've actually got my heating on. Not now, but... I had mine on last night. How many slices do we need? As many as you want. Yeah, as many as you want. <coughs> we're doing about, what, 20, 30? Yeah, something like that. <coughs> A few more slices. Yeah, the thing sure. is, you wouldn't be able to do these in the air fryer. No, you won't. You will, you will not get away with the air fryer. No. I've not really got on with those, but that's nice. <clears throat> that's a lot of people love it. Yeah. Does it, who has an air fryer? Everyone? Yeah. No. I actually recently bought a cheese toasty maker, which has been. Ooh. Great. Now that's different. Reminds me of my childhood. Yep, that's different. Cheese, baked beans, Cheese, toasty. Oh, oh my oh. god, unbelievable. Delicious. The little things, the little things in life. Just too good for <clears throat> words. Too good for. So that's the right for plantain. Yeah. I'll okay, just check our leg. In, in the fryer, you were, really? Well, uh, let's have a little check. You want to be putting? I mean, is your baguette in the oven now? Yeah. Have a little check. Let's have a little look. You want about six to eight minutes, but I mean, it all depends on the oven. This oven is a little bit slow today, but probably it could be anything between six and 12 minutes. If you check it every sort of three minutes, just to see, and then they should just be crispy, really, like a little bit of toast. Yeah. I always think if you have local fishmongers and you've actually, some of them stick together. It's That's all right. These are good. So as you can see, Rosemary's, this is how we're looking on our plantain now. Has anyone finished frying some of their plantain? Yeah, I'm just getting more. Yeah? Just take your Brilliant. time. Take your time. Yeah, you know, just do do the thing. Make sure they look lovely. And I and I think they're very pretty. Just When, when, like when they cup up like that, it's good because they capture all yeah. the sea bass. And when people come to pick them up, it doesn't fall everywhere. Uh, it's the last thing you want with a canopy. It really works. Because it's falling over. We're just, guys, we're following you. We're doing it at your speed. Just so you understand that. Yeah. So, they're fantastic. -o. Beautiful. I know, they do, they're lovely to do these, aren't they? Yeah. I haven't done these for a long time, I have to say to you. I mean, we used to serve them in the restaurant, and then you can 
you can slice the plantain lengthways as well. Yeah, lovely. And, put it and then you'd the serve food. it with a whole ceviche. So That's right, exactly. This is basically, we used to do a sea bass ceviche in one of the old restaurants. Oh, lovely. <clears throat> and we used to serve it with a long plantain. It. But I thought, wouldn't it be nice if you could do it just in one bite as a canopy? Yeah, so. and it worked beautifully. Yeah. It? And it's always good to have, use what you've got around. So. Of course it is. Right. And you can also do a you vegetarian want to, one. I tell you what, do a long one. And we'll put some long ones in there. I mean, I'll, sh I'll struggle without the... No, I know. No, I, I can try. Do you want to try? Yeah, so why not? Yeah, let's just do these. Well, you've set me a real challenge. I here. have now. Only because we're with them and we're yeah. following with them. Right, as soon as you've all finished, I want you to say it to him. Yeah, you let us know when you're finished and then we can go on to the sea bass and steak yeah. tartare mix. There we are. Isn't that wonderful? Why are you chopping it up? This here is a plantain. Rosemary has challenged me to slice it long ways rather than round, which is proving proving difficult. Yeah, it will do, because it's not. <laughs> <enough. laughs> I'll try it with a sharper knife. Yeah. This one's a bit sharper. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's perfect. There we go. Look, look, look at that. That's perfect. Lovely. Show off now. Yeah, you are showing off. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, me too. Look at that. Right, let's, should we try okay, these? Let's just try those. Let's try those. Perfect. <laughs> okay, let's bun these in. One, two, three. Actually, I'm only going to put three. Oh, they'll be good. They'll yeah. be good. They'll be lovely. They'll work brilliant. You can tell if they're too thick, because as soon as you put it in, they don't seem to fizz up so much. No. <clears throat> You're so right. Oh, they look great. They're good, aren't they? Yeah. Can I have a job, please? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Now, okay, I think we should start. On to I'll next. just finish the, on to keep on to the um. What's the next? Oh, what's the next thing we have to do? Well, how's your how's everyone's baguette in the oven? Okay, just got. Give two, that a check, maybe. Two main, two more minutes, and then we're done. And should we go on to the sea bass? First? Definitely go on to the sea bass. Has, there, has anyone got a whole sea bass, or have you just got the fillets? Yeah, That's all right. All right. But we're just going to show you. Elliot's going to show you how to fillet a fish. Yeah, I can show you how to fillet. No, you just take it. So Perfect. with the fish, can everyone see if you're filleting? So you go just underneath here by the head. I'll do it this way. I'm left-handed, so I just want to make sure you see. And then you go down the backbone. You're going to keep away. And just don't apply too much pressure because what you don't want to do is slip. So just put your hand gently and then just with a sharp knife you go down. And you can almost hear the bone as you go down. If you slide it down, you literally hear it along, yeah. along the bone, don't you? And then you can hear it. If you, I don't know if you can hear this, but... And you can just... Yeah. And, you should, and you should be able to see... I love that sound. I mean, if you go to the fish market, Billingsgate, you see some of the fishmongers. Oh, it is quite unbelievable Love how it. fast they go. So, like that. I love filleting fish. Think about fish, it's always easier on one side than it is on the other side. I, always I was always it. told, Rosemary, and if you leave, if you almost leave the fillet on, yes. and then flick it over, it helps get the second fillet off. Yes. Interesting. So, like that. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Look at that. And then you've got the fillet. That's shiny. And it's got four bones at the top. Yeah. So what you want to do, you've got the four bones here. Yeah. You just want to, you just want to remove those and then down to the belly. I normally just would remove this piece here. And that's your fillet. Like that. And I mean, there's not. Oh, that's beautiful. There's not really any bones in that. Oh, there's, not what, there's one little one there. And obviously, you can fry it and you could serve it with mashed potatoes and vegetables, but we're going to do ceviche today. Yeah. <clears throat> the fillets that you've got at home, have they all got the skin on? Or are they skinned? Yes. They've got the skin on. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to show you how to skin the fillets next. So we'll do a few. We'll do. I think we'll do three fillets. So we'll start with this one here. Now what you want to do, when you come to skin the fish, you don't want the super, super sharp knife because the knife will go straight through the fish. The fish. 
So I'll use this one here. So you get the you hold you hold the tail, give yourself some room, and you put the knife, and you just gently move the knife like that. Now you start with your knife moving in your hand, but then the key is you just hold the knife and then you, you move your hand. You hold the knife still and you just move your hand. And you can you see I'm I'm not moving the knife, the knife stood still. But my hand is moving with the skin. And I mean, sometimes you'll have a little bit of skin left on, which is fine. I love doing that. I think it's one of the most satisfying things yeah. ever. And you know, you can deep fry it if you want. You could deep fry the whole thing. Yeah. And then when, if you don't want to be wasteful, you can just go like that. Yeah. With a little end piece as well. And we'll put that there. And then when you flick it over, you've got a little bit of the belly here, which we'll just, we'll, we'll just carve that piece off. And then I, in, in Japan, I think, Rosemary, tell me if I'm wrong, the red, this red, the r little bit of uh, red blood, blood vein. It's called a blood, it's blood fat, basically. Yeah. They call it blood fat. And they do serve that, and I yes. don't mind to eat it. No. But in Japan, in a lot of English restaurants, they'll carve that it off because it isn't yes. fresh. So the key is, yes. when it's red, it's like showing off that it, yes. this really is the best piece of fish you in can fact, use. In fact, people don't realise, in fact, in this country, you have a lot of blood fat actually on salmon and things like this. Yeah. Now, the one thing about that is, if it is farm salmon, I don't like to eat it only because I feel they've eaten. Yeah. You know, they are. They don't have so much <coughs> exercise. They're not in there. Whereas the wild salmon and wild sea trout, that's much thinner, and then that's a really good thing to eat. So it yeah. depends. If it's farm salmon, then you can't. I wouldn't eat it if it's too oily. And also, sometimes on sea bass, if it's what it's, if they have a bit too much on sea bass, if it's a farm sea bass. But absolutely right. If you end up with a delicious wild one like we have here, which is the biggest treat under the sun, you wouldn't take that off because it's all part of the fish. Because they've got far more exercise and they do far much more work. And you know, it's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, and how's yeah. everyone getting on with the filleting of the sea bass? Yeah. yeah? I want to show you Dave in the corner there. Dave, David Boyle. Dave, he's so prepped up. He's done everything. Unbelievable. So next, once you've taken, you're all taking the little bit of belly off as well. So there's sort of a hard bit of belly on the fillet. Yeah. If you get rid of that. And then what we need to do is we need to dice the sea bass. So I'm going to switch knives. I'm just going to give that a little rinse. Yes. So if you put it into thin strips, now you need to make sure this is thin strips because <clears throat> ceviche is cured or cooked by the lime juice. So if it's too thick, it will be raw in the middle. You can eat, you can eat it raw. It won't do any harm. I love raw fish. Yeah, but for this dish, we want to yes. cure it slightly. But also, it's quite important they don't put it into a metal bowl. Yes. Because it's very important. So I've given you a a lovely you know if you put it into a metal bowl it reacts with yeah, the metal it reacts again so as soon as you've got some yeah. limes in there and things like that just thin slices is it yeah not super thin but like i don't know sort of two centimeters yes perfect and it doesn't need to be perfect gosh do you know I love doing this. It just excites me. Do you know, there's something about cooking, guys. I don't know. But it just, dealing with beautiful food and produce is the most exciting thing ever. And also it's treating it with a lot of respect as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what food is all about. I always look things like things to look neat. When you, even if you're putting whatever you're doing, to actually put things onto trays so they look... Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's just so nice. It's one of the most important things in a, in a kitchen, I think, making things line up. It's like when you do chocolates. You can never have chocolates that aren't lined up properly. They all look amazing at the end. Yeah, they All do. the different colours from the plantain oh, and wonderful. the skin. Wonderful, <clears throat> wonderful. Look at that. So you want to dice it all up? We'll dice it up as well. Yeah. Yes, dice it, ready. So you've sliced it into long strips. Sorry, I did miss that bit of information there, guys. And then you just want to slice it again or dice it into small cubes. 
actually, you know what? Even a little bit of sabiche on the corner yeah, like that. And you can pick it up. And you just pick it up like yeah, that. Yeah, we can show that as well. Yes, let's do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a reason why you wouldn't have put the bits that you trimmed off? Did you not put those in? I wouldn't, no. It's a different, the belly is more fatty. Believe it or right. not, it's, um, I never use the belly. I no. Think I would put it into a mousse maybe, you know, or just yeah. probably because there's not very really much there. But I'd fry it. I'd fry it. I'd fry it. Yeah, just right. fry a bit of belly. But you wouldn't actually use it on a thing like this. When you're okay. using raw food or anything like this, you have to use the prime product, yeah. the prime part. Like with the steak tartare. We'll Everything use it. has to be prime. We're using the fillet. <clears throat> prime, prime, prime. Otherwise you might sort of get it, you know. One more fillet. Yes, lovely. Everyone getting on okay with that? Mm -hmm. It's great. It's a bit working away. Kathy, have you got somebody coming over for drinks tonight? Um, unfortunately not. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Just the two of us. <laughs> oh, well, you can, okay, well, then you can enjoy the two of you. Yeah. Look at David. You've got to look at David. Look, look, he's in there. Oh, wow. They, he's actually, they're, they're actually, um, look, he's, he's got Brilliant. it already, yeah. You buy plantains and plantain chips on Amazon. Oh, oh you can get one on Amazon. That's brilliant. Well, don't forget to buy my jams and chutneys on Amazon. <laughs> oh, are they on Amazon as well? Well, no, actually, they're in the cardo. Oh, we can't get a cardo up here. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we've got Booth's supermarket. That's the fancy one up here. Oh, yes, it is. It's like Waitrose. Maybe you should get it in there. I should get them in Booth's, actually, yes. Oh, you should, Rosemary, definitely. Yeah, I should. Yeah, Booth's are actually quite good. Although they're probably big with oh, yes. the um, hawks head relish people. I'll, I'll actually put it all away, yes. I'll pop it in the fridge like that. Okay. So I don't waste it all. So I'm just going to give my hands a wash. Yes. You, once you've done the dicing of the bass, we're just going to have a little clean down. Yeah. I'm your, I'm your clean. Is that all right? Yeah, I'm your I'll give you the board. I'm your clean. I'll give me your board. This is lovely. Rosemary Schrager's. <laughs> can't believe it. I'll tell you what. I'm starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. If you'd have told me when I was 16 I'd be yeah. cooking with Rosemary Schrago <laughs> and she's cleaning up. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> what a day. Oh dear. So yeah, so we've got the sea bass diced and obviously we've got our croutons ready and we've got our plantain ready, which is good. All good to go on to the ceviche mix, everybody? So if we get our, you've got pomegranate, chilli, Cucumber, avocado, lime, and lemon. And, I'll, and then, if you get your bass out of the fridge, we're going to mix it all together. But we'll do the chopping first on the board, and then we'll do the mix. Right. right. They're doing very well, aren't they? They're doing amazing. Right. Your coffee, your coffee's there. Don't forget to drink your coffee. Oh, I've had a lovely sip of that. Right, we're ready to go? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> right, so, you found the cucumber. We're going to add our bass into this bowl just so it's in there. And then we've got to chop a few veggies in a second. So that's in there like that. Again, don't put it into a silver bowl, put it into a glass or ceramic. We're going to put a uh, cucumber. I leave this. I leave the skin. Yeah, so the fish is in the bowl. You leave the skin on. I I'm leave very the... glad to hear that because just... I do because it gives it green. Flavour. Colour. Flavour. And we're going to use, I reckon, around that much for this. So we're only going to use a little bit of the Perfect. cucumber. So we'll split that in half. The cucumber in half. Yeah. I'm going to take the seeds out. So we'll take the seeds out. So I'm going to bring that to me. With a spoon is the best way to do it. Yeah. Like so. And I mean, this is great. If you if you're having a barbecue in the summer, I mean, I know it's not really the summer now. You could just do a massive bowl of this, mm. and then put it in it the middle of the last week. Yeah, that's true. And then, as Rosemary did with those plantain, the long crisps. It's so pretty. It's so nice in a big bowl. So pretty. And it's very healthy. Very healthy. very healthy. So cucumber like that. We're going to cut it into pretty much the theme of the day, 
into long batons and then we're going to slice it thinly only because you need to remember we need to try and be able to fit it onto our little onto our little how do you do you put a little bit of water in advance salt on it just to get a bit of water out of it before you do it the cucumber yeah it's just because it has to be very see i always think if you're doing it like this yeah tell me if i'm right go on they want to do it now in advance i definitely would have salted this a little bit yeah if you if you were to do it in yeah, advance too much sure. water yeah. but if they do it um a little no. bit, exactly if you do it straight away straight to service uh you won't need to yeah so i think that's a good tip that is a great another tip, tip because otherwise you're going to have too much water in your ceviche yeah that is true and ceviche it's just getting the acidity right and all that kind of thing but i'll go through that with you in a moment because there's yeah. a few cool tips mm -hmm. so i'm going to put the cucumber in Perfect. i'm going to chop this one as well so no rush so cucumber in this one really is delicious this yeah. is oh i know this I, is I love them. probably I love one it. of my favorites i totally with you there and i mean even if you did your normal canapé party or sausage mm. rolls pork mm. pie and you just did one of them each time oh. it's just they're all these are quite well factor ones but it's just great to have it with um as a starter as you say oh yeah very a wonderful cool starter you could make your avocado into a rose yeah and just put it into a rose i know it's old-fashioned but actually people oh, love you it. can't beat it you can't beat it and do I mean, you know how to make a rose everybody have you ever made a rose you're gonna have to oh. show me i haven't done that uh, can i, show you, <laughs> you, need can to I show, show you how to make a rose it's a skill. It's a well, you call it a skill. I call it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, in 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 with the fish at the moment. We've just got the cucumber in there at the moment, but I'm still behind on cutting. So you just keep going. Rosemary's going to show us how to do an avocado rose. Yes. So we got our. I know this is actually quite ages, but actually I think it's quite retro. No, oh, it's cool. It's yeah. coming back. It's it. Oh, you're not kidding. It's coming back. Right, right. Rosemary, you take I've got plenty of avocados, so if you need more, I've got plenty. Right, we're going to cut this into things. Now, the most important thing here is to have an avocado that's just perfect to eat, but also not too soft okay. either. It's two bits of each one. Okay, so you have to just literally just take this off. Very important that you get the outside off very easily with your thumb. All right, so you take it off really carefully because what you don't want to do. You don't want to make that as you can see because it is really ripe so i'm going to now pull it off there that's it. tricky when i really ripe isn't it yeah that's fine it's actually going to be slightly now this is interesting because it's slightly harder there than it is there but i'm not going to worry about that so we're going to put that there right clean your hands very important to get clean hands now the most important thing is I always use a very small knife because I find by using a small never leave your knife on the board either. It's how you have lots of accidents. I'm going to clean the board up. And if you want to take this ceviche or the ceviche, I, we all call it differently, so all the same word. So now you take this. Now the whole thing is I've got to make it the length of this board. That's it, right? You're going to have to come to my right. Yep. I'm going to come back from here. Now, this is really important. Now, what you get, if you can, can you see? Right, it's got to be very thin. Wow. That's the trick. If it's not thin, it doesn't work. It is a skill. It is a skill. No, it's not a skill. So, you know, I struggle with this one. No, you wouldn't. Right, so once you've done that, and the better it is, the thinner it is, the better, the, the longer you can make it. That's a bit thick. I'm trying to, I'm trying to now, um, it is very ripe. Probably a little bit too ripe. This bit. Yeah. That's fine. It's a good demonstration. It is. Right, so once you've got that, you can see this. Now you think you might be able to do anything. You then go like that. Now the trick is, obviously, because this is so ripe, I've got to be very, very gentle. So I'm going to start from this end. Take it, all right. Still not good enough. It needs to be at least a foot, but not a bit. Not good enough yet. I'll take it round twice. You see, push this in. 
and you can get ready in the afternoon. If you cut, if you get one of these plastic knives, I was given this tip some time ago, it will never go brown, your avocado. Plastic knife. Plastic knife. Ah. It does. It's the, right. it's the knife. Oh dear. It's the knife that makes it go round. Right. So once you've done that, you can also do little ones as well. Right. So what I'm going to do, I'm now going to do this. I'm going to tidy it all up. This is where I'm afraid I get a bit over myself. So, and what is important is, I'm going to start this end. You come round. Okay. Now, I'm going to very carefully very carefully bring this round not too big please not too big small is now I'm going to bring this round this side like that right so what you do now obviously if it wasn't wasn't quite so ripe and then what we can do is you would should be able to see this should be I would have to make this completely equal all round which isn't difficult but it is difficult when you're having a really really ripe one. So what I would do is I'd put this into a bowl and, and then I'd cover it, I'd cover it with, you actually can take it out so it goes out. Yeah, it's just a little thing, but it is really ripe. So you do have to make sure that, and also it has to be equal. But as he has a little presentation, make sure it's in the middle, little presentation. I think it looks very pretty. And then what you do is you just take a lime and just speed a bit of lime around it and just leave it until you're ready to serve. And that would be perfect if you had the bass ceviche in the That's middle. That's exactly right. We could do one maybe. Yes, well I was going to say, because also Elliot, it's very modern, you know. It is. Today it's very modern, it can be, if we can decorate it, but it's yeah. just a tiny idea that you could do with this lovely ceviche sauce. You like? I mean, a steak tartare as well. You can do a lot. Yeah, you can do a steak tartare too, with yeah. anything. In fact, I've never done it. That would be lovely. Why is egg on top? Oh yeah. I mean, that would really work. That would be lovely. Oh, just I might do that with a bit of steak uh, and all a steak uh, a quail's egg. Yeah. And put it on. Oh my God! Let's Delicious. do that. Yeah. As a one-off. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I might actually get another avocado, which is slightly riper, and do one so it's perfect. Yeah. Okay. While I'm doing while I'm doing that, you carry on. All right, so we are on to the ceviche mix as we were going through. So at the minute we've got the bass and the cucumber in there at the moment. So we're going to add about half an avocado to this. We're going to do diced avocado. So that's why the ceviche would go, this mix will go very nicely into that avocado rose. Mm -hmm. But this is for the canapé. Mm -hmm. So half an avocado. They are perfectly ripe. For this, you want it to be lovely and ripe. Everyone can see that, yeah? So I'm just going to chuck that. Oh, I know. Gorgeousness. The thing with the avocado, when you're mixing it through the ceviche, you don't want to over mix it because it becomes it becomes too much like That's smushed perfect. in. That's perfect. Okay. Oh, there. Right there. Yeah, so peel the avocado. And then you're going to dice half of the avocado into the mix. So I'm just adding that to the mix now. Has everyone got their chilli chopped or...? Yeah. Alright, so you get your chilli in. I'm going to go with quite heavy on chilli because I think we quite like chilli. And then pomegranate seeds. I'm going, to get, I'm going to get all that pomegranate in. I mean, again, look, it's just all about colour. Now, you could leave that as it is in the fridge for six hours. It won't do anything. But lastminute.com is the lime juice. Lime juice and olive oil. Now, the key is you put the lime juice in, which I'll show you in a moment. Lime juice, salt and pepper. And again, you let that cook the fish. And it can take around one to two minutes and you'll see the fish i'll show you at the moment it's like opaque and white but you'll see it's to start changing color and actually go like a almost like a cooked white once that's happened you'll add the olive oil which will coat the fish once that olive oil's coated the fish it stops the cooking you've got your bass your cucumber your chili your pomegranate seeds all in there 
We'll do the lime juice, olive oil, salt and pepper in a moment. This is the exciting part. This is the exciting part. So, we've got all of our ingredients in the bowl. Like so, all those beautiful colours. And do you know what we're missing in there? There's a little bit of co chopped coriander, that's important. Okay. Don't go crazy, again, stalk and all. We'll just put a little bit of chopped coriander through. Is everyone up to scratch with this? Yeah. Perfect. Oh my gosh. So, we've got a little bit more here, so I think we'll do the juice. Three limes, half a lemon. Right, that's lovely. Perfect. Another wash. Perfect. Right. So, juice in, obviously no pip. So we've got our lime juice going in now. Obviously this dish is Peruvian, South American. That's right. And if it's done right, it can be really delicious. But if you put too much acidity in, yeah, I mean, it all depends on how juicy the limes yeah. are as well. Yeah, These are very juicy. Yeah. Yeah. So I've put... Well, usually, usually it's all right. it's all the juice. Yeah, well, that's even better. I'm just going to have a look, give it a little mix. That looks absolutely wonderful. Oh, it will be... It really does. And do you know what I fun. love? Do you know what I love? I actually love the size of your your sea bass because sometimes they put make it too small in restaurants anyway as well. Oh, yeah. I like to actually have it that size. It's got, that is the, the the way that's cut there is sort yeah. of the perfect. I agree. Because you don't want it too small because it will no. it will overcook. Absolutely. But you don't want it too big where it's absolutely raw. so. Perfect. Now this the actual word would be macerating, but it's cooking. But we're going to add some salt now. You can see, as soon as you add the lime juice, start to give the mix in the bowl. This is the molten salt. I mean, you've got plenty of time. Molten salt in here, yeah. You want to be, you don't want to go crazy. We can always add. Yeah. And then a bit of pepper. I put, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't put pepper because it's a Peruvian yeah. dish. Yeah. Oh, I quite like pepper. You know, a little bit of pepper. I love is, a bit of pepper. Pepper is a spice and people don't realise you need to use pepper in the right way and I always I bang on about it. I love I love how many of you heard me say that? that? I bang on about pepper, pepper being a spice. Pepper. That looks amazing. And you can see it's hard to describe you can see it's not so, there's like a they call it like tiger milk and it's this yeah. white liquid that comes off of the sea bass. For me I reckon that's enough lime juice. So do I I can see that. And then Leave that for about 30 seconds more. So that lime juice has been yes. there for around one or two minutes. Now, how many portions do you call that, which is the recipe? If... Tell you what I think. If you were to do a portion on there, or as oh, a, no, no, a can no, of base, can this is enough for 30 people. Yeah, that's absolutely This is enough for around 30 people. 30 to 40, well, 30, no, yeah. 30 generous portions too. Yeah. And I mean, it's always better to have a little bit more yes. than not enough. Let's exactly. have a sip of my coffee, if you're Let's have me. a sip. Right. David's doing well in the corner there. Looks better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to have a little taste. Do you want to taste those now? Yep. So yeah, give it a taste yeah. now. You know, they always taste. Oh. That's perfection. Wow. Mm. And what you've got in there, the coriander, oh. you've got the soft avocado, which is rich. You've got the pomegranate seeds, the chili. I think that's um, cooked enough. That's cooked enough. Yeah. So now you've got to run around and yeah. quickly get your olive oil in to coat the fish and that will stop the cooking. Yeah. You want to be quite generous with the olive oil. We have 40 it's mil. Grease paper from here. And then we'll give that a mix again. Yes. Yeah, and you don't want to be over mixing this either because that avocado will start to become an avocado puree. So you see that now is wonderful. Yeah. That's just perfect serve. And you're going to get that back into the fridge now. Right. Yeah. You get. You don't want too too much liquid on there. So if there is a lot of liquid in there, just pour it off. Let's have a look. If you put that up to the camera lens, 
Is it how much liquids in there? That looks good, no? I think it looks that good. That looks good. Okay. Is it starting to go sort of white now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So give that a good mix. Now add the olive oil. About 20 to 40 mil. And we'll let you catch up while we just give it a little clean down. Yeah. Everything else looks good. It does, Yeah, it? that's great. I'll do that. You finish no that then. Yeah, perfect. Right, next we will do bass ceviche. Mm -hmm. So you might need to give me a hand with that. Yeah. So Right, so let's do this. So what we're going to do, we're going to... Should we do a break. mixture? Let's do a mixture. So with the small ones, obviously you've got your mix. You want to make sure you get a little bit of everything on here. You can fill them up quite well. <clears throat> We've gone like that. <clears throat> there you go. You can eat that. Yeah. So Indeed. I personally think that... Mm. Like just it's good, huh? So good. One side, like that. Like that. So it has These are beautiful like yeah, that. They're beautiful, aren't they? I mean, mm. I... If you've got the longer planting, it's great. But I mean, it is quite hard to do this at home, the longer ones, isn't it? Yeah, it is, actually. But... <clears throat> one of the ones that are gorgeous, they look like a <laughs> Yeah, they're so good. Mm. Oh my god, they look lovely. Yeah, so this is the beautiful sea bass that you've got at 5am. Oh, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Well, oh, you try well worth it. Oh, god. <laughs> and they are, they are fiddly. Yeah, oh, wow. they are. They really are fiddly. Ah. And I like the little, the pomegranate gives it a little pop of acidity. Mm. It's mm -hmm. lovely. Oh. Mm. So good. Huh? Mm. This yeah. is the problem. I eat half of them before I've even started. <laughs> I think George would be done all well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do. I couldn't get any, so I just give these vegetable crisps. Could you make soon? Vegetable crisps is good. Really, it's just anything that's just no, got a bit of crunch. Vegetable crisps are great. I think they look amazing. What do you Absolutely think, everybody? amazing. Okay, I actually love the ceviche with all that. That sort of looks... It's a lovely lunch, that. Perfect. Nice and healthy as oh, well. Oh, healthy yeah? and lovely.